Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this super pretty um, wavy twist bow that I have translated. I am a little bit obsessed with these kind of bows that do this at the moment. So like I said, this is another one that I've fallen in, in love with. And this is how to make it two-tone. So obviously you've got your blue this side and your white that side. So I'm going to get into it and show you how to make the bow. Let's just pop that out there in the corner. And what you'll need is four pieces of nine inches of three inch ribbon so one white sorry two white two purple in this case let's get them in shot for you okay and what i've done is about an inch over say as you can see i have glued them well actually i've used hemming tape to attach those two pieces together nicely securely with something that I can stitch through but like I said you can use your glue gun or whatever you personally prefer or any sort of type of fabric glue if that works best for you but like I said just do what your personal preference is and then obviously I've got purple one side white this side and the reason I've done that is that is what gives you this effect either side the different colours so we have got We'll turn it so you can see. So, on this layer, obviously, this six inch piece, which is another six inch piece of three inch ribbon, what I've done is I've folded it at four inches. So, there's two there. And that goes directly over the crease and again i've used heat bond um, hemming tape to attach that that bit four four inches over the white side that bit four inches over the, the purple side and obviously so you get this effect so you basically got the four inches over the side that you want the color on so like so if you wanted it all white in you do your print so it was both on white sides if you want two opposite sides obviously you do one side white one side purple that's how you get the color effect if that makes sense so i'm going to take our pieces we're going to go like this and i'm going to move one out of the way so we don't get confused so start this way with your pattern print facing down so as you can see my roses are currently upside down that's the way that they should be but what you want to do is take this corner here and bring it up a little over that point there so that we can see that's over that edge and I have some of these clips so I'm just going to use that to clip that in place and then we take this side we bring that over we want it so that that point is one inch it's a bit too far that's better so we want one inch difference from that corner to here we want that point to be lined up with this side okay and when you're happy you've got that all sorted you can usually these clips again or alligator clips whatever you've got what i like to do is just clip that corner i'm also going to pin through my edges here just to make sure that this is all lined up because what you want in a minute when we cut we want these two edges and these two edges well three one, two, three. Can you see? The inner layers. We want all of those to be even when we do this. There we go. So we want all of those edges like that to be completely even. So when we stitch through, we're not going to have any issues and we're going to catch all those layers. So once you're happy, everything's lined up. This is what your front will look like. This is what the back looks like. 
and then you can take your scissors and we're going to cut along that edge like so so you get those two triangles and then we want to heat seal everything we want to stay in that blue part of the flame flame remember we don't want to go into that orange bit and heat stain that white ribbon that we've got in there there we go So that's what it now looks like. That's your front. That's the back. It's all pinned nicely, ready to be stitched. And we're going to repeat exactly the same process this side. Again, with the roses facing down, now up. And take this corner. To that point again. Clip that in place, take that side, that corner, one inch, from there, make sure you're happy with the placement, and clip this corner. Take your pin, make sure you're going through all your layers. Pin there so that you know that's lined up. Like I said, that's your back. That's front. Once you're happy, again, get your scissors. Cut down. and heat seal everything in that blue clear part of the flame, none of the orange whatsoever. There we go. And again, there's your front, that's the back. And if you place them on top of each other, they should be exactly the same size okay so what we want to do now is we're going to do eight stitches to give us four creases nice and even and like i said we want to make sure that all of these layers are all at the edge and we're going to go through all of them as you can see there that's slipped a little bit when we were cutting so i'm just gonna adjust that a little bit just trim that a little bit more so that's lined up and i'm gonna add another pen we don't want any of those layers slipping and us missing anything because we want to be going through everything okay so i'm going to put the stitches in and i'll show you once i've done because like i said i don't concentrate when i'm counting otherwise we want to start from this corner this point here the solid color bit three corner like so for your first one Like I said, make sure you're going through all your layers. Okay, so I've done 10 actually on this one. So one, two, three, four, five creases. 
and that is in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on the back, you've got one, two, three, four, five. And try and make them as even as possible. Okay. And like I said, you'll get four creases once that's done. And again, before you start stitching, just make sure that all of those are lined up and you're going to be able to go through all of them as you're placing your stitches. And again, you want to do exactly the same as what you've done this side. So whatever you do this side, you must always do the same amount of stitches this side. So I need to do another 10, this one, starting from the top of the purple point. So one... And 10 should be coming back up through that corner, like I said, catching all them layers. So it's one, two, three, four, about, about six layers we should be going through. And again, as you can see, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is 10 in total for that one. We've got the one, two, three, four, five on the back. Okay, so from here, you'll be able to see white this side, purple this side, that's where the twist is going to come from. So cinch that nice and tight on both sides. And what I do is I reline up those creases. I'm going to cinch stitch all the way around again. You can make them in these in two pieces and glue together. Like I said, just remember whatever you do one side. So if you do f t 10 stitches, 5 creases this side, you need to do 10 stitches, 5 creases that side. If you do 8 and 4, you need to do 8 and 4 this side. It's all about having the exact same balance on both sides of your bow. If you don't have the balance, They won't sit properly and they won't cinch together and group how they should so always remember that whatever you do to one side exactly the same the other go through that side all five and then what i'm going to do is from the back i'm just going to go through that layer through there and like I said, stay right close, very close to the edge, so we can hide this with our middle once we wrap it. Go through there again. Go through the back. And across, back down. Like so. And that just stops that from opening up. We don't want that to happen. And again, I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches. Now we can take these clips off because everything is nice and secure. There we go. And that is how the main part of the bow looks like this. Okay. And what I've done is I've done a here's what I've made earlier and I have made a twisted duo base bow to match our twisted 
white and purple main bow so obviously there's more purple this side more white that side so what we want is that way yeah so basically we've got the more white this way so we're going to have the white at the top there we've got more purple this side so we want the white there and that will just give it a little bit of pop of colour behind and I am going to thread through my layers or you can glue like I said whichever you personally prefer and then we can add our clip or bobble and add our centre so through the back from the very middle of the bow from beneath and this is two pieces one purple one white in 13 inches you could probably do 14 as well if you like a little bit more showing behind like I said I like just a little bit of a peak but like I said if you wanted a bit more like I said do 14 instead of 13 like I said work out what works best for you Okay, wrap around a couple of times. And stitch off as normal. And then I've got some white, just to wrap it. And then I'm going to do a scrunch centre just to give it a bit of balance. But I've also got an extra long alligator clip. This one is 80 uh, millimetre, as you can see, or 8 centimetres, depending on what you work working. And I want a spot of glue just across that centre. Hold that to the back of my bow. And then we are going to heat seal our end. Touch glue on there. Like so. I will link the Twisted Duo, duo Bow in the description if you want to do that for your base like I said you can do a peek bow you can play around and do whatever you personally cho choose so I'm just going to add a touch of glue here just so that that doesn't slip open just a little bit that's better wrap round twice as normal there's once And there's twice. Cut that extra off. Don't forget to heat your seal. Touch your glue just there. Like so. And as you can see, it's starting to look cute now. And what I'm going to do, let's just see how much of this I need to go around. A little bit less than that. About four inches you need. And this is one inch ribbon. And what you do is fold your end into an S shape this way. And... Heat and pinch. Be careful not to burn yourself though. Okay, and we did the S that way, that one. So now we do the S the opposite way. On this side. Just check. That was right. 
So do your S your opposite way to this because that's what gives you your scrunched up look again. And that's why we use the orange bit of the flame. The blue bit of the flame, not the orange. There we go. So you should have that. So you have the dip that side and the dip the opposite side. And then you want a bit of glue on here. Lift open your clip and hold that down a second and then twist that round you go like that you get this effect and then you want glue just on there open that up and glue that down and there you go that gives you a nice sort of balance to the centre and don't be afraid as you've seen me just giving this a little bit of a fluff until everything's There you go, perfect. Like I said, don't ever be afraid to do that. Like I said, just give your bow a little bit of a, a perk up once you've done, just until you're happy. And if you ever want to, um, what I recommend you do, um, any bow that you feel is gonna shift or move or anything like that, give it a setting uh, with sort of an extra strength. Um, this is a max hold, extra strength, uh, humidity resistant hairspray. It costs about eight, uh, 99 pence pound from um, the supermarket. Like I said, it's a really good brand. Like I said, this one's from Tesco. Um, and like I said, I just literally spray the whole bow with it. I weigh the whole bow and uh, let it set. And then none of these bits will move whatsoever. So like I said, it's worth doing that, but like I said, always do it in well ventilated. This is a super pretty blue and white version. Like I said, I love this style. It is so cute. It's simpler than it looks. Like I said, you could do entirely, you could do your purple, purple, white, white, etc. You can play around with it, do what you like. But this is what I like about this style, these, these certain styles, like I said, one little twist and you can have an entirely new look to the bow so thank you for watching hopefully you found this super useful um like i said don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you need any more help with any of the tutorials whatsoever uh, pop across and ask me any questions i'm always available to help okay thank you bye